uh, we already learned that the period of oscillation of a simple plane is given by t equal to 2 pi into root of l by g. Here, t represents the period of oscillation we explained just before, and where l is the length of the plane and g. G means acceleration due to gravity. And today's our experimental objective is to get g experimentally, right? Now, what we did here, I mean, if you go further with this equation, if, we, if I square this equation, what will happen? t squared, right? Equal to, come on, 4 pi square, yes, L divided by G, yes. So, 4 pi square L by G. If you look into this equation, T square is what? 4 pi square divided by G times L. If I write this way, you can see that 4 is a constant, pi is a constant, G is a constant, is it? So, that means I can simply write T square is proportional to L, is it? So, today in our experimental setup, we have take, we took uh, length and the corresponding period. If I have period, of course, I can find period t square, right? That means today I have a set of L and corresponding t square. Look into this equation. We know that t square is proportional to L. And the way that we did in our previous experiment, if I'm going to plot this, I mean, if I plot t square in the y-axis and L in the x-axis, what kind of a graph we are going to get? Yes, yes, you are right. We will get a straight line. Yes. And once I fit this into a straight line and the computer can give me the slope of this, right? And what will be the slope of this represents slope equal to what? Can you guess? Look here. I plot this in the y-axis and this in the x-axis. And we know that our equation y equal to mx, right? So y, that means t square and here 4 pi square divided by g times x. So look at the slope. What is the slope represents? Yes, slope is, slope is 4 pi square divided by g. Here comes our answer, right? What is the g experimental then? g is 4 pi square divided by slope. Am I right? So now you can able to find G experimentally. That's all about our experiment and we are going to do it now. To do the experiment now. now. In order to do the experiment, first of all, I'm going to take the length of the pendulum. So I just keep it at the center, then okay, it can read 34 centimeters the length of the pendulum. 34 centimeter means 0.34 meter. To record this periodic motion, I'm going to oscillate it for a small angle. While it oscillate for small angle, this rotary motion sensor can provide us a graph of this. And I'm going to collect that graph by just collect this button. And the moment I start to collect, the data is taken. And here we will get a curve that the way that we expect. It will be a sine curve. And if I auto scale it, after 10 seconds it will be automatically stops. Then if I auto scale it, yes, we are getting a periodic motion. I mean, it's the motion is changing in the course of time. Now, our idea is to get the period of this motion. We know that the period is this, right? And we are going to get this period. But in order, yes, I'm going to find the uh, period of this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to select this motion, this graph. Then I will fit this into curve fit. Here I have an option for this to choose. Here I have an option that is a sign function. I'm going to try fit and put OK. And when I did that, I'm getting this information of the graph, information of the curve and from this information you can see that here it represents the angle and the angle is changing in the course of time and of course uh, angle is, is we can consider it as an amplitude uh, here you can see that the function equation is the angle the angle or the amplitude in the course of time is a sine bt plus c plus d right it basically it is the am amplitude is amplitude in the course of time is a sine omega t plus 
pi. So from our relation, omega is in that computer relation, it is b, right? Have a look. Omega is here they wrote as b. So right now I have b, b from the graph. B is b is 5.494. If I have this value, if I have this value, b equal to 5.494. If b is equal to 5.494, that means it is omega. If I have omega, I can get period t, right? From which relation? We know that omega equal to 2 pi divided by t. That means t is 2 pi divided by omega. That means 2 pi divided by 5.494. From this, I will get the period, right? So right now, I have a length and the corresponding t. From this, I can get t square. So I have one set of reading for L and t square. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to change this length to another length. I'm going to give this to a little bit smaller length. So this is, I just changed this to one or two centimeters smaller than that. So right now I'm going to get the length of this. So this is the length. I can get it is 33 centimeter. So that means 0 0.33 meter. Now I can get another set of uh, curve. Uh, first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to store this. So experiment, store the latest run. Now I'm going to run it again for a small angle of oscillation. While it is running, I'm going to collect the data. So as we expect, we are going to get a sine curve. And from the sine curve, we can find the period. Right? You see, it automatically stops. Now I am selecting this. Then I'm going to fit this into uh, a sine function. The moment I fit this, I will get the equation for this sine function. So if I save this, I can read it. Look at this, I'm going to store it, store latest run. Now, again, here I have another B, another B or another omega. That omega is here. Now the omega equal to B, right? So it is equal to 5.625. From this, I can get period, period T equal to 2 pi by omega, right? And look here, we will get a lesser time because omega is greater than before. So we'll get another time. So right now I have a set of L and another T, right? So I will get one reading, two reading, and I can do it for another length. And we will provide you the length and T square data. Then you can do the experiment. And for your information, it is actually, is it a simple pendulum? No, it's not a simple pendulum. If it is a simple pendulum, supposed to be this has no mass, it's a massless string. But anyway, it's a physical pendulum and we are going to use the equation of simple pendulum here. Actually, uh, when we use the equation of simple pendulum in the physical pendulum case, we will get some error. So our experiment also will get the G with a little bit of error. So let's see.